and welcome to Valley Homes on TV. I'm Todd Flesny, your co-host, along with Debbie Giordano. Hi, Todd. Hey, Deb. Thanks for joining us. We um, appreciate you tuning in to check out what's going on here in Milpitas. Uh, we air on Channel 26, five days a week, um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evenings, and Saturday and Sunday mornings. So um, check, in, check us out. We're glad you tuned in. And we have a guest today to talk a little bit more about uh, locally what's happening here in a specific segment of our real estate market. I'd like to introduce our host, if, great. Our great guest. Um, this is Steve Tao. He's with uh, Prudential. Did I get that right? Mesa McDuffie. Mesa, Mesa McDuffie. I was close. Uh, and you are a commercial real estate broker. Actually, you're in Fremont. You live in Milpitas, though. That's correct. And Steve Tao. And thank you very much for coming. Oh, my pleasure. Well, let me ask you, um, Steve, what exactly do you do in your work? What does a commercial real estate broker well, do? By, by the simple definition, commercial real estate is almost everything that's not residential. It sounded funny, but that's a, one quick way of defining it. And it, it, commercial real estate is a fairly broad uh, term that covers a lot of different segments and sectors. Like what? So uh, retail, for example, okay. uh, office R&D. Uh, industrial warehouse. Now, what's R and D? The folks may not know. Uh, what that's that is. a research and development. So, okay. for example, the uh, if you drive along uh, Highway 237 and see a lot of these, a lot of these uh, one-story low low flung uh, buildings uh, with a with the truck doors in the back and the loading ramps. Uh, but however, you have a you know glass lined uh, front entrance uh, and the site of the building. Uh, you most likely have an R and D building. Okay. Uh, this is something that started back in. The early 70s, you know, when the Silicon Valley started, those were the, the original R&D buildings, and then you also have, you know, a segment that's in land and also investment, and it and the investment sector can also be broken down into folks specializing in, you know, multifamily sectors, uh, also known as apartments, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know, retails, and uh, also. Interesting. I didn't know you got into the apartment realm. So you know. Uh, Different brokers have different uh, sectors of specializations, so you know everyone kind of takes up a little portion of the marketplace. Right. Okay, so, so commercial is that just a sales end, or does it also include leasing? Both. Okay, and, Both. And so do folks tend to specialize in one or the other with that as well? Um, not so specifically, unless you get into the investment sector of it. Uh, so investments primarily in the sales. Uh, you know, if you were to look at look at a firm specifically, like, like say. Marcus and Metal Shop, mm -hmm. and they specialize in, in investment sales nationwide. So they only do investment sales. Okay. But uh, most of the brokers, you know, do both um, leasing as well as uh, um, uh, sales activities. So how many years background do you have in your uh, business? I came back into the business back in 1998. Nice. And so survived through the a couple ups and a couple downs. Well, actually, driving through Malpitas, you see a lot of see-through buildings, so there is a lot of vacant commercial space. Probably the most you've ever seen, maybe in the history of numbers or calculations, they've even come up with that. I don't know. Well, 2001 is, uh, was a, uh, a rather um, down year for the commercial real estate segment. Um, you know, if you are keeping your eyes open for the next, in the next uh, six months, you know, you will see that the filtering effect of a commercial real estate uh, market um, coming uh, in our direction. We're seeing rents uh, stiffening up and nice. then moving back, uh, moving north, um, both the Milpitas, the North San Jose market, and also the Fremont market as well. So it's uh, the market is definitely showing signs of, a, um, I should say, more than showing signs of recovery at this point. Good. So now, is, is that tend to be independent of what we see perhaps on the residential end of things? Or do those tend to mirror one another to an extent? I think that the mirroring end of it uh, probably is more than employment side. Okay. So once the employment stabilizes and you have a, uh, a stability along that side, uh, the apartment, uh, the multifamily sector uh, occupancy level goes back up. And then you will also see um, with that, uh, let me backtrack for a second. It kind of goes hand in hand. Um, so when employment goes up, the occupancy in the commercial site goes up as uh, with it as well. well. Steve, let me ask you, in just layman's terms, quick terms that the viewers can understand, mm -hmm. in determining value and leasing costs, how do you factor that? What, what formulas do you use to fac factor that? Sure. The leasing cost, uh, uh, leasing cost is, is 
somewhat of an art, and in a sense, there's a, a market support level. That's what what's the, the the deal prices or the deal rates that have been done in the marketplace for that particular uh, sector, for for example, like retail or or uh, R and D, uh, research and development. So there's buildings. a set value already. There's a set values uh, that's supported um, by by what's been completed as a as a inked transactions, and then. Um, and also, there's expectant value. So, for example, uh, with the with the, some of our major uh, companies like Google, Apple, and uh, um, Facebook have taken up a tremendous amount of space. You know, from Mountain View, Palo Alto, going uh, trending east. So, would would you say generally true that Milpitas has maybe lower leasing costs per square footage than say some other areas that other local other cities or? Um, if you if you were to, to say that that will be Milpitas rental rates or the lease rates will be will be historically lower than uh, than say uh, Sunnyvale Mountain View okay. because of locational aspect mm -hmm. and okay. also product aspect and uh, so you know, going back to your earlier question with regards to how do you set quote unquote value on mm -hmm. the on the property um, there are a couple of general uh, quick ways of Determining values, one is by uh, via the, the net operating income and the capitalization rate. Um, the capitalization rate is also set, you know, not so much set, but it's it's a general trading. Uh, it's a it's a, a return on investment value. And so right now the marketplace is somewhere between say four uh, low fours to about low sixes, you know, as the as the the, the, the cap rate for the marketplace. Uh, for a lot of pro different products, and we probably don't have time to get into the specifics, mm -hmm. but you know, you you take the net, uh, the net operating income, and uh, and uh, uh, correlate that with uh, uh, the cap rates, okay. and you have a general, a quick rule of thumb, you know, on, or pretty, it's a fairly narrow range rule and, of thumb value. And, and I'm guessing that's what you get paid to do. That's. We offer our services in the There audience. you go. <laughs> and it sounds like you do it very well. <laughs> Todd, you Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just curious because you talk about you know leasing and, and selling, uh, selling properties as well for commercial purposes. What would dictate whether someone really is interested in leasing space versus buying space on a commercial basis? That would that would really be depending on on several factors. You know, one here is really that um, is your business a a, a long-term player in a specific market. Uh, a lot of times, companies, you know, do not want to be saddled with with real estate as a part of the the, the holding portfolios. Mm -hmm. So, if and when they are acquired, you know, that the buyer may not want to, uh, the purchaser may not want to acquire the real estate portion of their business. And secondly, here is um, um, what is your really what's your objective? You know, that is what is your business objective? You know, we uh, years ago we saw. Um, uh, office industrial condos, you know, came on the market in a in a sort of gangbuster fa uh, fashion, and the buyers for those particular um, uh, condos uh, were primarily because they were servicing their own needs. You know, for for business to buy something, uh, I'll give you a prime example uh, for uh, for processor who have a lot of uh, say high uh, age occupancy level requirements, which means that they have a lot of uh, high uh, chemical uses and whatnot. Uh, if they were to lease that, that the infrastructure cost associated with building that 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 particular uh, manufacturing requirement is significant. That you may want to consider purchasing a building versus leasing it. Okay. Otherwise, you you don't have enough time, uh, or potentially may not may not have enough time to uh, properly amortize your value. And also, if a landlord decides to play hardball, as an example, you you may be on out without without a, the, all the values being properly amortized. Okay. So but, uh, vacancy factor, Milpitas. So mm -hmm. um, would you say it's on the higher end right now, or you say that's coming down? It's 2001 was the turning point. 2001 was a was a, a low point. A and, low point, or or and the, uh, the market came, you know, uh, came. So it's now back in recovery. What would you say the vacancy rate might might be now in Milpitas? Um, you know, I think it depending on the. Depending on the segment that you're in, you're probably in the in the teens right now, and across the board. Okay. Okay. And so uh, maybe we've cut that in half at least, or 
Yes, so. we have cut significant amount, okay. and again, it just really depends on the, the sector and also the the, the, the sub market that you're in. Okay. So you know, will we put a generalization on it? You know, I think we're the low low change right now. Okay, yeah. that's good. Well, we that's talked a little bit about values earlier. How do things like interest rates impact values? Uh, this man loves interest <laughs> rates, by the way. <laughs> well, um, I don't do a lot of investment sales, so you know, I can probably just speak more a little bit more on the, on the generalized terms. You know, it affects uh, several several factors. If if a purchaser were to purchase it, you know, it certainly will affect their their monthly obligations as well as, you know, that the the debt the debt service uh, will be placed on onto their business. Right. Um, interest rate, as with anything, it plays a significant role in the in of itself. You know, to to the pricing, and also um, and also to the uh, stability of our uh, um, of the marketplace. Let me, I got two questions for you, but I do want to ask this one question. You and I have known each other good, for quite a long time. Like, I think we met on the golf course. So I'll throw if that me, in. If memory serves me so, correctly. Yeah, we, we, both of us were pretty bad. But that, and no, you were the one with the pink ball. Pink ball. <laughs> um, so when I met you, you had not moved to Milpitas yet. So I know you're a resident here, and you've been here, what, about eight years or so, maybe? Since about 2007. So, yeah. So just um, what, what was it that compelled you to come to Milpitas? What was it about anything about the city or something about, um, you know, the, um, anyway, what the city has to offer? What, what was it that attracted you to Milpitas? Uh, Milpitas has always been a great city, and it's been always been a, 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 a small little gem. Um, I should say, it, it feels like a small little gem, but in effect, it's a very pretty good-sized city, Yeah. and it has a sort of that local value to it. Nice. And, uh, um, you know, I always... You know, like the, the the diversity and the services that the city offers. Mm -hmm. You know, even though we're going through some changes right now, say for example the McCarthy Ranch, but you know we always have the opportunity, you know, to reinvent reinvent ourselves as a city. And I think you know, just uh, as a side note, the real reason um, we we moved down to Milpitas uh, was because of an unfortunate incident of my wife um, had a uh, had her vehicle carjacked on our driveway. Um, at your other house? At, <laughs> yes, we had a, we had a residence in Mission San Jose, oh, Fremont, no. and the uh, incident in of itself did not bother me that much, as we always know weird things and the unfortunate. So you know, Melpitas is a safe community. We yeah. we certainly <laughs> appreciate that quality about it, about this, uh, this community, and we certainly enjoyed you know living here. Great. Well, um, Todd, did you have anything else? Well, we're glad to have you as a resident here and as our expert on commercial real estate, Steve. It, it's been good learning a little bit more about the commercial market. Well, thank you very much for having well, me today. Can we ask him the last question about the future? What, what uh, maybe he sees absolutely. to be uh, the future mm -hmm. of, of your industry? And uh, um, yeah, you got to get a crystal ball out now. De yeah, we, Debbie loves to ask the crystal ball questions. questions. Okay. <laughs> so, what do you see? <laughs> we'll come back, play the, play the tape later, and see how you did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank you for thank you for putting a crystal ball out there for me. I think Milpitas is you know geographically and strategically located right on the elbow of the of the, the transportation corridors, and uh, and uh, I certainly see us, um, you know, playing a major role uh, as always. Well, what will be there uh, for the, the macro economy of the of the Silicon Valley, you know, we will always have uh, the the backbone, you know, in terms of providing job and also the ability to have um, have space uh, being available or having that ability to. Uh, to provide, you know, high uh, educated and a, and a good population base. So it sounds for, like you see a base. lot of opportunity left in Milpitas. We see a lot of opportunities, and uh, as with all cities, you know, uh, in and around this, gen, you know, the, the South Bay area and the, and the and South and Alameda County as well, to our neighbors to the north, there's always opportunity there. And I think, you know, over long long haul, this is a city I see with vibrancy and okay. e economic viability. Let's fill up some of those empty buildings with empl employers and some jobs. for. We're always stuff. looking for referrals as well. Good. <laughs> Very Thanks. good. Well, we do have a gift for you as well. Oh, yes. Oh, and so while you. we're doing that, uh, Steve, if you'd like to give folks your contact information, they want to contact you, you can do that by email or phone number if you want to give that. Absolutely. Uh, probably the easiest way to, to uh, uh, get hold of me will be my, uh, my cell phone number, which is 510-919-5034. And uh, also my email address is my uh, my name Steve C Tao, 
at AOL.com. So those, those are two great revenue, uh, avenues to, to get a hold of me at. And I will probably return your uh, your uh, correspondence, Great. your phone calls. Terrific. Well, we, well, I tell you what, Steve, since we mentioned golfing, mm -hmm. and we did have Mark Dorsak, our golf pro, um, we, we which, did. which we taped him a few uh, last month. But here's a Valley Homes on TV T-shirt for you to thank you for being a guest on our show. And it's collared, so it does work on the golf course, too. Great. Well, thank you very much, and I appreciate you. You're properly attiring me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much yeah. for having me on the thank show. Thank you this very today. much thank for coming. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thanks, Steve. Thanks for sharing your expertise with well, us. We appreciate having you as a guest. Well, thank you. Thank you again for having me. Appreciate it. I'll tell you, California is one great state, but it hasn't been a walk in the park. I mean, they call me invasive species. Nice, huh? Or hungry pests. Like I'm some kind of bad guy or something. I mean, do I look invasive? No. You should think of me as a culinary tourist. Yeah, I'm sort of a footloose foodie of your fields and trees. I just want to sample the local fare. Just a taste, really. And I'm not the pushy type. People help me get around, mostly on the things they move and pack. Did you know I'm completely vegetarian? Yeah, very healthy. Hungry pests. Oh, gotta run. I do have a lot of mouths to feed. The truth is, hungry pests threaten to devour California's trees and agriculture. It's up to each of us to learn to leave hungry pests behind. Go to hungrypests.com and get the facts. A message from the USDA. Come on, see what I mean? Hello everybody, you're watching Valley Homes on TV. You've tuned into Channel 26 um, here in Milpitas on local cable TV where Todd Flesner and I uh, air on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6.30 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m. We're on five days a week, Todd. How about we, that? We are. I mean, yeah, we talk a lot about what's going on around Milpitas and in the real estate market and try to keep people up to speed with that. Have we been busy this year or what? It has been a busy year. Yeah. Um, you know, real estate sales have picked up, the brisk case of, of the properties that are available, they're going quickly, and mortgage rates have been historically low. And, and uh, we hope they remain that way for a little bit longer. Well, we, we, we certainly do. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's been a great time for folks who have been looking to buy to get into the market. Yeah, well, we've talked about uh, pricing, and we've talked about how that's moved and not moved. I, I gave a report a couple weeks ago. I don't have the numbers to bring. We're a little early in the September game. We're in mid-September, but um, in another month I should have some more numbers to look at but I can tell you just alone today in the San Jose Mercury here's a headline buyers bid up homes as default filings drop so what that means if, if you know anything about the cycle of products it's supply and demand correct and we have a very very low supply we have a very high demand and what that's doing is it's causing the prices to rise uh, making a lot of people very happy that are sellers right now. So yeah, the equation for on the seller end of things is, is definitely changed. And so um, not as much competition per se from the REOs, the real estate owned, bank owned, and right. foreclosure properties, Right. correct? Right. Which, which has led to a little bit of a dec decrease in inventory. Right, and I, I had read also in, we get a monthly real estate magazine and the, uh, the filings are, are definitely down. I don't know if the banks are holding them, if we're going to see, I just don't think, I, I, we really have believed that we've hit rock bottom in the market and, and that all the signs are there. So that's right. bringing buyers your way to get pre-qualified and I know it's it, you're having a hard time finding properties for your buyers that you're pre-qualifying. Well, uh, yeah, the experience of the folks that I've been working with who are, who are shopping for homes are having is you know, multiple offers, so that it's very competitive as they go in to look for properties. Um, and so, you know, they're, they're out having to do a lot of legwork to find the right property to be able to, to do that. And, and they have to make sure that they're really ready to go, um, that they're pre-approved, that their loan is ready so that they can act quickly. Um, well, you used a very nice word. It's called multiple <laughs> offers. Let yeah. me uh, add a dimension on how that happens. With a property, you know, look, you prep it into the correct condition. We've had a, a couple shows where we've talked about staging, mm -hmm. colors, and getting the home ready, cleaning it up. That's key. A pricing is, is so um, important right now. I have a townhouse that's in Fremont. 
we priced it right below 600, just at 595, and we generated five offers, and it's gone 25,000 over the asking price. So, it, 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 pricing it below that that or right about a threshold would make sense, and that's brought, brought in the multiple offers on that property. So that pricing is the key right now. Right, and so and from our buyer perspective as well, I think being aware of that, that it's going to be competitive as you go into that, the properties that are priced aggressively, you know, to be able to, to have a strategy that, with the, the realtor that you're working with to be able to, um, to be successful in your negotiation. Let me talk about another article that just came up in our real estate magazine. As we talk about the prices rising, guess what else is going to be rising for homeowners that own their properties? Can I say the nasty word? Ooh. Taxes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. What, um, what, what's going to happen now is when the county does their reassessment of a property, and that's based on recent sales within the area. Well, let, let me, let me back, backtrack a little bit. What had happened since the market took a dip is a lot of homeowners were automatically devalued. Under Prop 13. Under, under Prop 13, the property values dropped. And taxes, some folks that bought their property maybe in the peak around 2004, 5, 2006, maybe even 2007. I've got a, a few pro properties that I bought in 2006 that were at the peak, and, and those were uh, revalued. So that was either done automatically or by filling out a form with the county assessor and having that done. So, so um, uh, when homeowners saw their property taxes decrease what's going to happen now we're excited about the pickup of the market but you will definitely see your property taxes probably go back up right. to where they were in fact what this article pointed out Todd is that under prop 13 when you when you buy property and you come in at a set value it cannot go up more than two percent in value each year but that's not true with the re-evaluation process an example, if you have a home that you paid 500000 for, and we know that they, over the, uh, over the course of 12 months, some homes were valued from 500 down to maybe 400 or 350 So if you got the better valuation, um, and then now the property's back up to 500000 it could shoot back up as quickly as it got devalued. So it would not be a 2% increase every right. year. It could be... Uh, you'll have another hundred thousand dollars in assessed valuation immediately. Right. So the Prop 13 it really protects you from the the initial basis correct price correct. of the property, but not right. the new. Not, so so that so that's going to cause some people some consternation if they get set at that new property tax value. Yeah, I have run into some folks who are dealing with that issue at this point in time. You know, as they've as tax bills are, are getting ready to come out here towards. Yep. Uh, November and December, when when those um, those payments are due, uh, be aware. Be to, aware. You know that if you had a reduction of, in value, that your tax base might be back up to where it was before. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, we got oh, the election, still a little ways away, you know. But uh, there's a lot of talk uh, in the local economy and the national economy. The debt is still huge. The national debt. It is. Um, do you have any prediction for uh, get on my Bernie crystal. <laughs> and, and get your crystal ball? My what crystal are crystal ball. rates, uh, uh, interest rates going to be doing? Well, you know, overall, the, the Fed, um, Chairman Bernanke and the Federal Reserve Board, and when they look at interest rate policy, they've indicated to us that through about 2014, they, they plan to keep um, the discount rate, uh, the Fed funds rate, low. It's right now at zero to a quarter percent. All right, and so... Um, we're going to stay in a low rate environment. Uh, now, does that relate directly to mortgage interest rates on a 30 year fixed rate? They, they don't tie directly. Um, but what that's saying is they expect the economy just to kind of limp along here. As if, if and when the economy begins, begins to pick up, we're going to see interest rates rise again. And pick up, would that be maybe a lower unemployment rate? Or yeah, what, what the, the, the key, factors? yeah, the unemployment rate definitely is there. But GDP, our gross domestic property. We talked property, about that before. You know, yeah. That's been in the 1% to 2% growth range right now. You know, healthier would be 3 to 4%. Um, and then we're going to we'll also take a look at the stock market as well. Um, the you know, stock market gave up many of its gains, and just recently it's kind of back to where it was before the dip. Um, but if we start to see the stock market get even more um, 
interesting for investors to look at. Um, it'll pull money away from fixed assets like bonds that pay a fixed rate of return, okay. and uh, and that also then begins to take interest rates up. So, um, you know, the overall economic activity, and that's really on a national basis. We, I think we've seen employment to an extent start to pick up here in the valley. It's not real vibrant yet, but we've got to see that really expand across the country. Okay, let me ask you something, Todd. Well, interest rates are at the historic lows. I think one of the common questions out there for homeowners that are not selling their property or aren't looking to, but to refinance, what, again, is that threshold that they should look at? I know they should call you first, which is fine. Yeah. They can call you and then check in. But um, at what point does a refinance make sense in terms of a rate? Well, my rule of thumb, and it really will depend a little bit on the interest or the, the loan amount that you have, but typically a half a percent reduction in interest rates for, for homeowners in this area it really starts to make sense. Mm. And so um, I, I like to do an analysis with people where we take a look at what is the cost for doing that. Nice. And, and you can do a no-cost loan. But you know, banks, banks are not benevolent institutions. There's always you know, something that's there. So no it's like when they open, you open up a checking account and you get free checking? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. You pay for it someplace else. Sounds Same thing with a no-cost loan. You that can do sense. a no-cost loan, but typically that will be about a quarter percent higher in interest rate than a no-point loan with paying the, the closing costs, which roughly are $3,000 or so. And so we can do some quick and easy math and figure out, you know, where's the break-even point with that? What's best for your situation? How long might you be in that loan or in that property? And then you have the information to, to make a good financial decision super, super. about, yeah, you know, what's the best way to do that. So, you know, if someone, you know, says, hey, this, you know, real quick, make a decision, you know, no-cost loan, just sign the papers. Yeah, you got to take a look a little bit deeper. And, I think. and of course, now might be a time to look at a 10, 15, or 20 year loan payoff where they can get that. I'm, I'm doing a lot of those with folks. Where that maybe the payment doesn't change much, mm -hmm. uh, stays stable, but they're putting more down in principle and able to. Um, exactly. You know, yeah, uh, the other, pay that yeah, loan off. exactly. And we just can do some analysis to take analysis a look at what that, that time value of paying that mortgage off earlier is going to be in terms of the savings and interest over the course of times. And, and often it's tens of thousands That's of dollars. That's terrific. That's terrific. So if I think folks that don't, uh, you know, are not going to take advantage of the rates right now, will be sorry probably in the next year or so. But yeah, it's you know it's been a, a unique time in terms of interest rates, and um, you know my grandparents had these sort of interest rates, but not since then. <laughs> yeah, have we seen that? And so it's, it's really it's a one it's in a lifetime sort of cycle that I think that we're seeing. So it's a good opportunity. Great. Well, um, the next time we meet for a wrap-up, I'll be bringing you some home values and Good. checking in on what Milpitas is doing, and I can only guess that we should see another uptick in, in uh, value. Well, yeah, with what we're seeing with the multiple offers and going over asking price, that would not be a surprise. But bring in the numbers, and we'll take a look, and yep. we'll share those with folks. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So if you have any uh, questions that you'd like uh, Todd and I to answer on the show, you can contact me um, at my email address, which is Giordano, G I O R. D A N O D J at AOL dot com. And Todd? I'm at Todd, T O D D, at sternmortgage dot com. S S T E R N, and the word mortgage spelled out. So we'll close for now, and thank you for watching Valley Homes on TV. We'll see you next time.